It seems like the dividend investing approach is a divisive strategy that is either loved or hated. Supporters of dividend investing identify as dividend investors and exclusively invest into dividend paying stocks. And opponents of dividend investing seem to avoid dividend stocks with just as much passion as their counterparts. Personally, I myself have been really drawn to the idea of dividend investing because of the possibilities for passive income and compound interest. But as I started doing more research, I realized there was a lot more going on with dividend investing than either its supporters or deniers care to admit. So today we're taking a look at all of the pros and cons of dividend investing to determine once and for all if this strategy is a legitimate investing approach for investors like you and me. I'll tell you exactly who can benefit from dividend investing and the type of person who should avoid it at all costs. If you're ready to learn about the definitive facts and fictions when it comes to dividend investing, don't go anywhere. As usual, we gotta start with the dividend basics before we can fully understand the pros and cons of the dividend investing strategy. If you wanna skip right to the dividend investing analysis, just use the timestamps in the description. Dividends are a distribution of a company's profits to its shareholders. Companies might distribute dividends on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Most of these dividends are cash payouts, although some companies issue dividends in the form of additional stock. So the next logical question is why would a company pay a dividend? Only a handful of business structures are required to pay a dividend, so why would a company volunteer to give away their profits? Well first, executing regular dividend payouts is a really attractive sign to investors. It gives the impression that companies are generating enough profits and their growth outlook is such that they don't need the extra cash to continue growing. Consistent and especially growing dividend distributions will attract new investors with additional funding, helping a company continue to grow their capital and their brand. And second, purchasing stock makes you entitled to a piece of the company's profits. A business's board of directors is obligated to do what it takes to earn you and other investors more money and dividends are one way of delivering those earnings to investors. Some companies choose to do this, while other companies choose to hold onto all of their revenue, reinvest them in their business, and provide you with additional profits in the form of stock price appreciation. This characteristic separates the market into two very different groups of publicly traded companies, and that's where the dividend investing controversy begins. When you invest in the stock market, you can choose to invest in companies that pay dividends or those that don't. Dividend investing is an investing approach where you invest solely into dividend paying stocks. There are a ton of arguments both for and against this strategy, and I think all the noise makes it difficult for a new investor to figure out if dividend investing is actually a good strategy for them. After hours of research, I finally determined if dividend investing is right for me. And today, I'm gonna to help you answer that same question. And to do that, we're gonna start with the cons of dividend investing because then we'll be able to look at the pros more objectively. The first downside of dividend investing is the risk of focusing only on dividend stocks. Everyone will have a different risk tolerance, but there's no denying that eliminating any portion of the stock market from your portfolio will increase your risk. A little more than 80% of the companies in the S&P 500 pay regular dividends. So out of 500 companies, about 80 companies are non-dividend payers. This means by ruling out non-dividend paying stocks from your portfolio, you're foregoing the returns of about 20% of the market. This may not sound too bad at first because a sizable portion of the market is made up of dividend paying stocks, but you need to consider the type of companies that aren't paying dividends. Historically, most companies that don't pay dividends are fast growing companies who choose to avoid dividends in order to reinvest in their own growth. Some of these companies include Facebook, Alphabet, Netflix, and Amazon. These are some of the fastest growing and most valuable businesses in the world. Investing in these stocks alone would have delivered huge returns to your portfolio in recent years, but as a dividend investor, you would miss out on all of them. Plus, if you're primarily focused on investing in high yield dividend stocks, you might make the mistake of investing in these stocks without doing any further research. Obviously, this is something you can avoid, but it's a common pitfall for beginners. The highest yielding stocks aren't always the best investments. If these businesses aren't growing and operating sustainably, you'll get burned because you invested based on the dividend yield alone. Next, you have to consider that dividends aren't guaranteed. Even if a company has a decades long history of paying dividends, they can decrease or completely eliminate their dividend whenever they want. This is something we saw a lot of companies do in response to the COVID pandemic. For example, Ford had been paying dividends since 1993 until it eliminated them in 2007. It brought dividends back in 2012 and just recently suspended dividends again this year. If you were relying on these dividends for income or portfolio returns, you would have been out of luck. So that risk is always present with dividend stocks, even if they have a long history of dividend distributions. Another downside of dividend investing is the taxes associated with receiving dividends. You have to pay taxes on dividends the year you receive them. Most dividends are taxed at the capital gains tax rate, and these are known as qualified dividends. Other dividends, known as unqualified dividends, are taxed as ordinary income. You have to be careful as an investor because some of the stocks with the highest dividend yields are paying out these unqualified dividends, which will cost you more in taxes. This is another example of how focusing on the dividend yield can actually hurt you. 
But for opposers of the dividend investing strategy, the argument is that you are forced into a taxable situation every time you receive a dividend. The annual returns you're anticipating from your investment are being taxed instead of accumulating over time. Obviously, you'll still enjoy cash returns, but the cost of taxes will add up over time. Let's compare this to investing in a growth stock that doesn't pay a dividend. If you invest $100 in a stock with a 10% dividend yield, you'll earn $10 in dividends, but you are taxed on those dividends. If we subtract the 15% long-term capital gains tax rate, which is almost the best case scenario, you're left with $850, making your portfolio value just $108.50. On the other hand, you might have invested $100 into a non-dividend paying stock that appreciated 10%. The stock is now worth $110 and you have no tax obligations because you haven't sold it yet. So your portfolio value remains at $110. Anti-dividend investors argue that it makes more sense to hold a growth stock and just sell it when you want the money. And when you do, you'll be taking the tax obligation on your terms, not when your investment decides to distribute a dividend. One of the biggest arguments against dividend investing comes from the dividend irrelevance theory, which suggests that dividend distributions don't help a stock's price and they can even hurt it. We're going to take a look at a quick example to illustrate this. Imagine a stock is priced at $10 and they declare a $1 dividend. The dividend irrelevance theory suggests that in a perfectly efficient market, the stock price will drop to $9 when that dividend is distributed. Then investors have no gain whatsoever. And in fact, if they keep that dividend instead of reinvesting it, they have less equity invested in the market than they started with. Another angle to this argument is that some companies accumulate more debt in order to continue paying out their dividends. In these cases, they may improperly allocate their cash flow in order to distribute their dividends and keep investors happy. Of course, as they accumulate more debt, it'll be reflected on their balance sheets, which might decrease the stock price. So this is how a company committed to continuing a dividend payout could hurt the stock's price. These arguments of the dividend irrelevance theory try to suggest that a stock isn't inherently a good investment just because it offers a dividend. Of course, these arguments also assume that markets are perfectly efficient, taxes don't exist, and achieving the highest total return is the investor's goal. So as you're about to see, the benefits of dividend investing and a little bit of due diligence on your investment prospects can debunk most of these arguments. But if you want to learn more about both sides of the dividend irrelevance theory, there are some great resources right here on YouTube. I would recommend Ben Felix's video supporting the dividend irrelevance theory and Joseph Carlson's video disproving the theory, both linked in the description below. But let's switch sides and talk the benefits of dividend investing, starting with the ability to do whatever you want with your dividend distributions. Receiving dividends gives you a ton of flexibility with your investment returns. First, you can collect them as passive income. This is a huge reason to pursue dividend investing because the income from dividend investing can be more predictable and stable than so many other forms of passive income. If you want passive income starting today, investing in non-dividend paying stocks won't get you there. And if you're someone who's putting away money for the long term, then you could also choose to reinvest your dividends. A study from Hartford Funds, which I think makes incredible arguments for dividend investing, showed that dividend reinvesting with the S&P 500 over the last 50 years would have contributed 80% of your total returns. It's no secret that dividend reinvesting can be a powerful tool for building compound interest, and this study illustrates that perfectly. And finally, you can choose to reinvest your dividends in other places. You can certainly invest your dividends back into the same stock, but one of the best strategies is to reinvest them back into other parts of your portfolio that are currently undervalued. This strategy is particularly effective in bear markets because you'll get huge returns when the market recovers. And this kind of flexibility isn't something you can get with non-dividend paying stocks. But to be fair, dividend reinvesting can take several years to produce substantial results in your portfolio. So it's a must for any long-term investor, but something you'll have to consider if you have any short-term investment goals. Another benefit of dividend investing is that dividend paying companies have historically performed better than non-dividend paying companies. During economic downturns, dividend paying stocks hold their values much better than their non-dividend paying counterparts. A lot of investors, and especially retirees, hold on to dividend paying stocks because they can be reliable sources of income when other areas of the market are not performing well. Additionally, new investors will be drawn to dividend paying stocks during these times because they offer a safer source of income. This combination holds up the value of dividend paying stocks during economic uncertainty and explains why they experience much lesser downturns than non-dividend paying stocks or benchmarks like the S&P 500. In addition to being less volatile, multiple studies and analyses have proven that dividend stocks have simply provided better returns than non-dividend stocks over time. Opposers of dividend investing will argue that this is simply luck, but the fact is, companies that hold themselves to paying regular dividends tend to have better financial systems and strategies in place. Because management is committed to fulfilling their dividends and satisfying their investors, they'll run the business more intentionally and achieve a better performance as a result. And this bodes well for dividend paying stocks whether you're a dividend investor or not. Unlike adjusted profits and other financial metrics, dividends can't be faked. So while you definitely need to evaluate a business before investing, the track record of having a regular or increasing dividend is a pretty good screening quality and gives dividend investors a better chance of picking a winning stock. 
To recap, the cons of dividend investing are the risk of a lack of diversification, the fact that dividends are never guaranteed, and the tax obligations of receiving dividends. You may also choose to consider the dividend irrelevance theory if that's something you agree with. The pros of dividend investing are the flexibility to control what you do with your returns, like using them for passive income or for dividend reinvestment to accelerate your portfolio growth. Dividend stocks have also historically performed better and might suggest that a business has decent financial practices in place. I think these studies and arguments prove that dividend investing definitely has some merits. Whether you're a dividend investor or not, there's no denying that dividend stocks belong in your portfolio one way or another. Ultimately, I think the dividend investing approach is a valid one, but not one for every investor. So let's take a look at the kind of investor who I think might benefit from the dividend investing approach. First, if you're someone who wants to achieve passive income, either to supplement your income or to live off of completely, dividend investing is the way to go. Non-dividend stocks simply won't provide that stable income, and you get a lot of flexibility choosing whether you want to cash out your dividends or reinvest them for later. This is also great for anyone at or near retirement because it allows you to live off of your investments without having to sell off pieces of your portfolio. Similarly, if you're young and saving for your retirement, dividend stocks will be a vital part of your long-term portfolio growth. The power of dividend reinvesting is huge, so you don't want to miss out on that. Furthermore, if you're saving inside a Roth IRA account, you won't have to pay taxes on any of your dividends, meaning they will accumulate and grow even faster. And even if you're not into stock picking, you can invest in a simple total market index fund that allows you to benefit from dividends and still hold some valuable growth stocks at the same time. I think one of the few times you would want to avoid a dividend investing strategy is if you have short-term plans for your investments that don't include passive income. With taxes in the nature of most growth stocks, I think it's possible for some growth stocks to outpace dividend stocks in short-term time spans. But honestly, I think there are pretty few, if any, occasions where you would want to avoid dividend stocks. In fact, as someone whose main financial goal is to increase my passive income, I realize that the dividend investing strategy is perfect for me. I'll diversify within my retirement account, but my standard taxable investment account will be focused on dividend paying stocks to build up that passive income. Of course, there's more to dividend investing than just picking high yielding stocks. I'm going to be discussing dividend investing strategies and techniques in future videos. So if you're interested in diving deeper into dividend investing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you'd like to do more research, be sure to check the description for links to some of the studies and resources I mentioned in this video. Happy investing, and I'll see you next week.